polymer application range is enhanced by incorporating the variety of additives or fillers or colorants. Fillers may reduce the cost and also they might give you some better properties. Additives impart some of the properties to facilitate processing under different conditions and also to alter some of the properties for specific purpose. All the types of additives need not be added to every grade or every batch of polymer. Certain additives are incorporated by the manufacturer of polymers, while some other are added by the compounder or the master batch manufacturers. Additives are classified as per the function they give to the addition or the polymer. So, antioxidants. Now, polymers, by and large, when you process at high temperature, they come in contact with air and under those conditions, it can degrade. And therefore, the antioxidants are incorporated. And it is to prevent the degradation to the maximum extent possible. The degradation can reduce the properties or it can give sometimes, it can impart some yellow color. The antioxidants are of two types, primary and secondary. Always it's a mixture of these two, which is to achieve the synergistic effects. The primary ones, they protect the polymer at high temperature of melting. And secondary ones, they protect the polymer during the usage. That means the protection is at lower temperature. So it's not thermal oxidation, thermal uh, protection, but it is oxidative. So polyethylene, polypropylene are produced in the form of powder. So antioxidants are incorporated by the manufacturer himself. And he adds to that level whereby he's first making the pellets, it should withstand. And second, when the processor makes the article, it should withstand during that time. And that's why antioxidants are normally not added by the processor. Many times, once the product is made, because the processing speeds are very high, let's say you are having a raffia tape. The raffia tape is made at very high speed. So during that time, a static electrical charge may develop. Also, when the fibers are used, the static electrical charge may be used, may be developed. Some polymers have inherent some static property. So what happens is that a furniture it may have some develop some static charge. So when a user goes close to that, he gets a small shock or he gets some uncomfortable feeling. Once that charge is dissipated, that feeling goes away. So <clears throat> to protect these kind of properties or what one can say to get antistatic properties, antistatic agents are used. And those can be again of two types, permanent or temporary. The temporary ones, they ooze out to the surface and after some time they go away and they give the protection of anti-stack over a limited period of time. There are permanent ones which can give you the protection over a longer period. The anti-static agents for medical devices have to be approved by the medical associations and usually the protection is only for a short period. Now, photostabilizers. Some of the products are exposed to UV light for a longer time, like outside furniture in a hotel or in a resort. So they need to be protected against that. Otherwise, they will change the color, they will fade away, and they will lose the properties. Therefore, a additive gives this protection against UV light. What it means, under UV light, instead of polymer degrading, these additives degrade and protect the polymer for a longer period. Lubricants and processing aids. Obviously, when you are processing at high speed, if frictional resistance can be reduced, it will give you more output, a lower power consumption. And therefore, lubricants and processing aids are added. Lubricants are generally of the type where they reduce the friction between polymer molecules also. While as processing aids, when they are added, they come out of the polymer material and they get closely associated with the metallic part of the processing machinery 
where the frictional resistance is reduced and that's why it is called as the processing aids. If you add extra quantity of processing aids, it can give you detrimental effects and therefore incorporation of processing aid is to be very, very careful. Flame retardants. When you are using some articles, it may catch fire under the fire conditions. So, if you want that it does not catch fire, there are anti-flame retardants or flame retardants are being added. One is they retard the propagation of flame. That is one type of additive. And second one is that there are some additives which decompose and form water molecule and therefore the flame does not catch, I mean the material does not catch fire or fire does not expand or it does not propagate. Plasticizers, the PVC normally requires a plasticizer because it lubricates in a different way, they are added to help PVC melt together and holding all the plastic particles at in a homogeneous fashion. Plasticizers also make PVC more flexible. So PVC plasticizers are of different type. Plasticizer can be liquid form or some of the PVC uses a polymeric plasticizers also. There are some developments going on whereby inherently plasticized PVC is being contemplated commercially. It may not have been hit the markets as yet. Reinforcement, those are fiber reinforcement or materials which enhance the mechanical properties significantly. Fibers, they reinforce the material. Glass filled polypropylene is used in many of the household items. Glass filled nylon, is used in gears, polybutyl interphthalate, PBT or PET, they are normally reinforced using the fibers. The fillers, fillers like calcium carbonate, talc, they are added to the polyethylene or polypropylene. They impart the, uh, the opacity and also reduce the cost. Most of the fillers are added to reduce the cost. However, there are some functional fillers, particularly when the porous fillers are there and liquid resins are there, the opacity depends upon the mixture of two different fillers or the filler particle size and therefore the fillers also impart sometimes the conductivity of polymer, thermal conductivity, particularly calcium carbonate and other materials or minerals. When you are mixing polyethylene or PVC, the heat gets transferred much faster if there are fillers. And that helps you to make the compound at a lower in less time because there is a proper heat transfer and degradation is prevented. Colorants, obviously pigments and dyes are incorporated. That enhances the aesthetic appeal. It gives you decorating effect. And dyes are, what is the difference between dye and pigment? Pigment is not soluble in any solvent. So it is a very fine particle. It gets dispersed into the polymer and gives the color. While as a dye may be soluble either in solvent or in the polymer. But colorants can be either pigments or dyes. And dyes or liquid colorants are more useful in paint and ink industry in the form of master batches. And pigments, master batches are more common in plastics. Now, that talks about additives by and large. But there are some testing which is being done and which is only for your information. Processor need not do all the testing. What is the MFI? It is at times measured using two loads, that is 2160 and maybe 5000 gram or 5 kg. The reason is that when the you are having a narrow molecular weight distribution and wide molecular weight distribution. The two MFI, although their MFI may be same, but these two grades give you two different MFI at high load. Although at 2.16, they give you the same MFI. Therefore, those who are testing the MFI, if they can also have measurement at 5000 gram or 5 kg, then you can have what is known as a polydispersity. And the polydispersity is mentioned 
as stress exponent ratio, which is defined there. Mechanical testing, of course, we want good tensile strength, modulus for stiffness, percent elongation at break, and strength at yield point. For packing, the permeability or what we call as transmission rates are measured. So these are briefly explained here. The mechanical properties are tensile testing. A film or a given specimen is held between the two jaws and one jaw is fixed and the other jaw is pulled slowly. This is known as the universal tensile testing machine, UTM. And the rate at which it should be pulled is defined by the ASTM and other standards. And normally it is 50 mm per minute. If you pull it too fast, the material may break earlier and elongation may be less. The force required to pull the material is measured and it is divided by the area which is exposed to the force. Elongation is calculated as starting length of the or original length of the sample and when you pull it down, when it breaks, how much elongation has taken place. So the final length minus the original length upon the original length multiplied by 100 is called a percent in elongation. Now, flexural strength is required for designing the chair, etc. because person sits on a chair and it will get bent. When it goes away, it might come to the original length, original shape, but it might take some time. And during the process, it might get permanently elongated or permanently D-shaped. So for that, the modulus is very, very important. And three-point bending is what is being normally adopted. So material held between the two points and a load of known weight is applied. The difference, the distance between the jaws is fixed. The load is fixed. Thickness of the specimen is also fixed. And depending upon this, you measure how much is the force required for the given elongation or given deformation. Impact strength, as we said, the impact is required for some of the products which may slip from your hands and they should not break. Like you have got a milk pouch or you have got an oil pouch or some pouch in which you have filled some liquid. While transporting, it may be slipped out of your hand and it might fall onto the floor and it may break. So to avoid this, we use impact modifiers. 